Hi, I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber, coming to you on YouTube Live. And if you've never been here before and you're catching us on a replay, you may actually want to hang around and watch it because we're going to have some great information in here. If you are catching us live, man, welcome to the show. Glad to have you here. What I want to tell you is, now we're doing some cool things. We've been working on some things. We're going to talk about them more in a little bit, but we are actually, man, we have put together a training program. I'm going to talk a little bit about it tonight. We're going to be releasing it in a couple of weeks. And tonight, man, I actually get to talk a little bit more about it. So that's kind of exciting. But what I want to tell you is, welcome to the channel. If you're wanting to get into the trades, if you're in the trades and want to get better, if you're in the trades and you're thinking about opening your own company, or if you already have your company and you're thinking about learning how to use social media to help you grow your business, then you're in the right spot. If you are catching us on a replay and you were searching plumbing and this is what came up, you may want to go over to the main channel to search to see if there's anything in particular that you are looking for there. If so, I hope you find it. If not, man, come on back. Uh, you can come join us every Monday at three o'clock central standard time. We go live from three till about five, five 30, somewhere around in there. Anyway, welcome to the show. So I'm going to jump into the chat real quick, but guys, we do have a link up at the top. If you have a question, please jump up there and ask it. I will jump over into the forum later and answer questions there. Normally I just jump into chat, say hello to people, see how everybody's doing. Hope everybody is doing great. And we're going to jump in there and see what's going on. First of all, I want to say hello. Jojo Turner says, hey, hurry up. Uh, glad to see you in here, Jojo. Hope you're doing good. And remember, guys, well, there it is. If you have any question to ask, please go over there and ask it because I guarantee those will get answered. Thank you to Miss Liz for having all this set up for me. Between her and Virgil and Austin and Grayson and Amber and Julie, man, they make it happen. Uh, good having all them in there. And, and you know, I get called this quite often, the Mr. Miyagi of plumbing. And I got to tell you, uh, it's kind of good because I really did enjoy that show. So great. And Mr. Virgil in the studio, actually he just left, but in, in the house and the studio, both good to have you. Gator 34 CAG, how we doing today? Good to see you. Andrew Marino, what's up? Caleb Ferguson, man, I appreciate that. Caleb, I'll tell you what, and we're going to do this, and I'll get Amber to see if she can find the link in there. I'm looking for some testimonials, so, so here's what I'm going to ask you all to do. And the neat thing about it is, look, we're putting together a training program, and it's not to help people learn plumbing. It's to help people learn how to get into the trades and how to be the best freaking tradesman that they could ever be. And this is something we've been working on for a while. So what I'm going to tell you is if you've ever learned anything from me, I want you to think about it because I'm going to have Amber put a link in there to go over to the testimonial page. Cause what we're going to do is on June the 14th, we're going to give away the free training and we're going to give it away to multiple people. So anybody that gets in and gives me a testimonial, if you've learned something from me, if you've picked up something of value, if I help make you a better person, if I help get you into the trades and make you better, if you got in the trades and now you're running your own truck or something like that, please. Uh, and like I said, Amber, if you will do that, I really would appreciate it. And I keep saying that like she's even in here. She, she may not even be in here. Uh, okay, Julie, that ain't funny. Let me jump back up to where I am. Uh, so excited about getting into the trades. I know this is this is going to be good. Adam says, Roger, water from a well, intermittent pressure on your hose, uh, a water capacitor. Now, you need a flux capacitor, just you know, pour water in it. You know, Adam, you, you probably need a, you probably need a pump, but you need it set for a pressure and probably need a tank that has a diaphragm valve or a diaphragm in it. So like an expansion tank, that way you can maintain a steady pressure. And I know that because that's what we did out at my sister's house. She's on well water too. On the way, Troy says, on the way to look at a 15-year-old water heater leaking. Time for a replacement. Skull Shivers says, hi, how are you doing? Good to see you in here. My brother, Mr. Steve Arloa from Hawaii. What's up, man? Good to have you in here. 
And we have a union member in the house, Local 638. Good to see you. Joey, which, which union is it? Uh, I think that's the UA. Uh, what union is it and where are you located? Just because, man, I always try to point people that are looking for a great spot to get in, a great spot to learn. Uh, anyway, help a brother out. Chris Cookston, how we doing? Good to see you in here. Uh, Chris Cookston, sorry about that. I, I know, Julie, people, people make fun of me and you laugh at it and you support it. See, I'll get that. Uh, yeah, Julie says, ha ha. A new company, what do you recommend how to pay your guys? You know, that's a great question. And I actually learned this from a group that I'm in. But really what you've got to do, you've got to look at what are the people around you paying? What would it cost you to hire the very best technician in your area and work your way back down from that? Because eventually you want to get your guys there. Uh, and you say how to pay them. Okay, so that's a different deal. You know, we are actually hourly rate. We're looking at going to a rate slash comp plan. We, we want to make it where our guys can make good money. And so many people in the trades do make good money but we want to make sure that we're paying as well or better than anybody else. So I do. I like that you ask. Shabber Jirbo, Jiro, how are you doing? Good to see you in here. Uh, Shabber Jiro. Okay. Make sure I got it right. Uh, hourly or percentage. And you know, the thing is, man, it's one that we're studying, looking at, because we want to make sure we get to the best. I think Steve Arlo is right. It's going to end up being some kind of a commission. You've got to make it where it's beneficial for them, where they really want to get in. They want to do good. They want to excel. But also, man, they're willing to put in time, learn to get better. Because the better they get, the more money they make. I mean, it's a good thing for them. <clears throat> Architectural Sheet Metal 101 is in the house. Architectural Sheet Metal 101. Guys, if you hadn't checked it out, go check out the channel. I love watching roofers work. And it's funny because... You know, as a plumber, we get we have to get on roofs every now and then. But I do. I love watching a good roofer work. And they know what they're doing. It's just kind of neat to watch. And there you go. Uh-oh. Look here. Lachlan Youngsbury, how are you doing? Hey, Roger, big shout out from down under. Good to have you in here. Lachlan, it's, it's really neat because I used to be a member of Green Plumbers USA here. I actually studied their program, uh, took their courses all about water conservation. And it was really neat to learn that it started over in Australia because of the drought conditions that y'all were fighting. And I think it's so cool because they actually decided, and, and I guess y'all got the Master Plumbers Association or something like that over there. They got this group of master plumbers together and said, look, what can we do to, to help the water conservation? We're plumbers. Plumbers walk in more people's houses every day than anybody else. And when we're there, we're normally there to talk about water either coming in going out whatever it is so luckily what i want to say is i thought that it was so cool that not only did they grow green plumbers over there but they brought it to the united states as green plumbers usa and i used to be part of that and i think that's pretty cool joy z says that sounds great i love it albert salise how are you doing <clears throat> Guys, I think I'm going to have to quit eating cheese, and I hate to say it because I love it. <clears throat> Julie says, hello. It is, it's great to see everybody in here tonight. Okay, this one here is wrong. Uh, Liz, I've got one in here that, that links to the forms, Google document. That's a wrong link. Uh, yeah, Liz just put. Uh, no, that link there, if I'm not mistaken, that's wrong because we're not Google. We're doing Kajabi. So please check that out. Uh, Joey Z, 15-year veteran, HVAC, four years, local 638. Good for you. Jay Spock says, as a new homeowner, your channel has helped me learn so much about plumbing and understanding how it works. Save me a number of calls to the plumber. I'm sure the plumber's not real happy about that. But you know what? It is what it is. Joey Z, steam fitters in New York City. Good for you. Joey, I've actually got uh, got friends that actually, he used to be an instructor up at Local One, a guy named John Cullen, great guy. 
And, you know, I really need to try to get him on here because I love his story about why he became a plumber. And man, it's just, it's really, it's one of those stories that when you hear it, you never forget. Uh, I need to talk to him, see about getting him on here. So cool deal. Thank you very much. The testimonial link will be up in just a second. Virgil, thank y'all so much, man. I appreciate it. There it is right there. So guys, here's the deal. And, and this is the one that that is actually going to pay you back. If you've ever learned anything from me, this link right here, and it's over in the chat, this link is going to ask you what you learned from me. Did you learn how to get in the trades? Did you learn how to be better? I mean, what, what did you learn? What have you learned from either, and, and look, some of y'all I've worked with. Uh, some of y'all I've actually taught in person. So if you're one of those people that that I've actually taught you anything, I am looking for testimonials. Uh, this link right here is great. Trades, tradesacademy.com slash feedback. If you'll go in there, it gives you a place that, that'll ask who you are or whatnot. That way we know we can get in touch with you. And hopefully, uh, and we're going to draw some of these people on the 14th. And what that's going to do, that's going to give them the opportunity to win the thing we're working on and giving away. And I'm, I'm excited about this. It's not very often. And look, I used to be an instructor in the union, so I love teaching. But it's not very often that we're doing things to where I can actually give away a training program to help people get better. So I love this. Uh, first of all, I've got to gotta jump over here into the Kajabi and I've got to go people. There we go. Filters. Select a filter. Contains any of these tags. And today is 0524. I got that right. 0524 questions live. And right now. Sergio, you, you're the only one that's got a question in there. I'll tell you what, I'll answer it since I'm here right now. But guys, if you have any questions, please go to the link up top. It takes you over into questions. And Sergio, since I'm here, man, and you are the one, I got it. Sergio is still in school. Is it worth getting an associate's degree before getting into a trade or just learning owner from the job? And Sergio, th this is a great question. And I really do like this because it depends on where you want to be or where you want to end up and how quick you want to get there. If, if you're wanting to go get a degree, and most people don't care if they're plumber, electrician, or HVAC tech ha has an associate's degree or not. But here's what I want to ask you, and this is part of what I teach in my program, is to start with your end game in mind. Where do you want to be? When, when you turn out in five years, when you've worked five more years, when you've worked 10 more years, where do you want to be? Do you want to move up to be a foreman or superintendent? Do you want to move up to be a project manager, director of operations? What do you want to do? And I always ask this because every time that I talk to people about getting in the trades, all through the learning, all through the training, all through the building, everything they do, I tell them to always keep their end game in mind. And why is that such a big deal? Because it helps you figure out what you want to do. So Sergio, what I'll tell you is that going to college and learning certain things could really help you. If you're going to learn bookkeeping, if you're going to learn accounting, if you're going to learn marketing. But if you're just going to college just to say, look, I got an associate's degree, uh, man, it, it's not going to do that much for you. My thought there would be, and, and, and look at me, I own my own company. I never went to college. So everything I learned, I learned right here on the job, or I hired coaches and consultants. And that's why I put together the program I did to help teach people things that can really help them. Uh, so I would ask, what, you, what do you want to do? do? Do you want to move up? Do you want to be maybe a project manager one day? Because the things that it's going to teach you, it's going to teach you how to study, how to get organized, how to find information, how to do different things. There are things in it that could be good, but man, if you want to be a plumber, you want to be a superintendent, you want to be a foreman, things like that, you don't have to go to college. You can be like me and learn it on your own. 
Now, in a minute, I'm going to tell y'all why we put this training program together because of people like you, Sergio. So I'll be back on that in a minute. Troy Hallman says he is rate plus. So we call that uh, our hourly plus commission. I like that. <clears throat> we have a price book. We don't have an hourly rate. Uh, so Mr. Cookdown, here's what I'll tell you. <clears throat> when the price book was put together, somebody had an hourly rate in mind. Because each one of those services, you look at how long it should have taken or how long it should take someone to do that. And you look at the materials used and your markup on it. And all that's got to be involved in it. So, man, even if you've got a price book, which we have a price book, but those prices are figured out a certain way. <clears throat> Y'all ever seen a big bag of white powder like this? <laughs> uh, I tell you what, and it's just sitting here because we, we finished up a video today, but... Anytime you go through the Charlotte airport with, a, with a, a bag of powder like this, you can probably expect a full body cavity search. Uh, luckily, I didn't have to go all the way through that, but it was a lot of fun. Thank you to the people over at Charlotte. We, we did have a blast. Chloe says, uh, 16, since I'm going to trade school, I think it's still good to be thinking about your future career. Amen. And, and I love the fact that you're thinking about that. Okay, but since I'm going to trade school, I think it's still a great idea. And, and man, it is so good of an idea. And what I want to say about that, Chloe, is look, there's so many people. And, and again, guys, this is what we put the course together. We're putting together for. When you go to trade school, they're going to teach you how to put pipe together, how to pull wire, how to hang boxes, how to hang ceiling fans, how to set toilets, whatever it is you're going to. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's what the union does. That's what PHCC does. That's what everybody does. They teach you the trade. If you're open shop and you go get a job to become a plumber, you're going to learn from a plumber. You're not going to have a formal education. You're not going to have all that, which is what the union has. So there's a difference there. But neither one of them are going to teach you the things. How do you become the very best? If you want to own the trades, whatever trade it is you're in, if you want to own that, if you want to have the right mindset going in, you want to have the right mindset during your interview. You want to learn the things that's going to help you get to the promotions faster. You want to learn how to bring more value to your company and make more money. Those are the things that we're talking about. <clears throat> so, Chloe, I love that. There's the link right there. <clears throat> if you have learned anything from me, this is the spot. Click on here. Go fill it out. Uh, just tell, tell us what you learned. Uh, did I teach you something that brought value to you? Because if it brought value to you, hopefully you're making more money off of it. And Liz, can we turn the not bought off? Uh, they've got the wrong link in there right here. This is not one to use because that goes to Google. All right. Chris Cookstown says we charge $99 service charge to come out, but a lot of companies in your area, they don't charge for service call. They go out for free, but we can't afford to go for free. And man, I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, we don't go for free. And I actually had a lady call today and say, look, man, does that go towards the service if we get it? And it's like, no, it really doesn't. Uh, and, and here's why. Uh, we're paying, I mean, Julie and I have to pay for a licensed drug tested background check plumber to go out in a van. We're spending our gas. We're, we're spending... We're spending money on gas, insurance, consumables. You know, they got to wear floor savers in the house. They wear gloves. They wear masks if the customers want them to. So there are so many different things. We got to pay for all that. So that's why there's a service fee. So I completely get it. And, and that's kind of how we sell it. Uh, yeah, I, I know. Uh, thanks a lot, Amber. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm thinking about it. Not working on it, just thinking about it. And there you go. Uh if you go get a degree, it's going to help you move ahead. Anytime you can bring more knowledge to yourself, you're going to bring more value to yourself and values what you get paid for. Because if you can bring value to yourself, you're worth more money to your employers. And man, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. What are you doing to bring more value? What are you doing to make you worth more money than the guy next to you? That's what it's about. I agree. 
Man, Adam is sharp. Adam is sharp. You know, I don't know if you've seen the video that I did with Gary V, uh, but I actually met Gary V two years ago now in Los Angeles. He was speaking at a conference. Uh, Will and myself were at it, and, and we, we both got Gary V shoes. And mine is actually right there, signed, signed by Gary V. Uh, so pretty cool deal. And if you don't know who Gary V is, you know what is what it is. Eric, hello from Dallas. Hello from Richardson. We are just northeast of Dallas, so right here in Richardson, Texas. Uh, Eric, are you a, a plumber? Are you in the trades, or are you, you just in here hanging out because you like my mustache? Because, man, I've, I've heard that one, too. Uh, Ronald Christ, how are you? Good to see you in here. Yes, there's poo sounds everywhere around here. Lachlan says, yes, that was an amazing program. Just finished your apprenticeship and have become a tradesman. Good for you. I love it. Loving your craft and wouldn't go back. And, and see, to me, those are the kind of stories that I hear. And, and I've got to get better because I've got to start asking people, there we go, the night bot got it going on. I love that. Thank you, Liz. You know, when I hear of people that ha I've done well for, meaning I've taught them something, I've helped them make more money, I've helped them get into a trade they love. I have people send me pictures of their business card and says, look, three years ago, I started watching you and I decided to become a plumber and now I'm running my own truck. So, you know, you can turn anything we do into so much more. And I love that. So thank you very much. Plus FC says, what math do I need to master for the plumbing trade? And you don't have to master any of it. It's really not complicated. Look at Liz taking care of me on his shoes. Thank you, girl. Uh, you know, the, the neat thing is you don't have to be a great math person. You've got to be able to add. You've got to be able to subtract. Sometimes you're going to need to convert from decimals to fractions, but it's nothing crazy. Uh, it's not super complicated. Uh, matter of fact, we're looking at Plumbing math, I've got it in two different places, uh, but we're, lo we're looking at doing some videos on plumbing math just to make it happen. Liz got my back right there. I love it. Jeremy G says, hello, how are you doing? Tomflation. Roger, 24-year-old plumber, drive a van for your boss and have a helper. How do I go about asking for more money? I love it. Currently 80 pounds a day, boss is a family friend. You know, Tom, and, and, and this is one thing that we've, we've put into the, the training program that we're doing just because of that reason. Some people don't know how to get out and find the right job. Some people don't know how to interview well to get the money when they get that job, to ask the right questions. And some people don't know how to ask for more money. One of the things that I recommend, and, and there's a few of them, but but one of them is look at the other people around you. If you know what they make, great. If you don't, that's fine. Look at how long you've been there. Look at what you've learned. And then come in and say, hey, man, look, I don't know if you know I'm still making you know this much money, uh, but this is how long I've been making it, man, since then. Look at these other things that I can do. I really think that I help you make revenue and, and I love it, but I just, I wanted to see if we can talk to you about how I'm compensated and what it takes to make more money here. What do I have to do to move up? Because I feel like I have been doing those things and it's, it's a very good way to put it. Matthew Wax says, when do you know you should start your own business as a plumber? Also, if you're an apprentice without a training program, non-union, what can you do to become a master plumber? Matthew, man, this is great, and I love this. First of all, and look, y'all heard me talking about the, the program that we're putting together, and it is getting into the trades. But it's not just getting into the trades. It's the things you need to know getting in. How do you know if you're in the right trade? How do you know if you're in the right position in the right trade? 
do you understand what it's like to be on a job site, whether that job site is a 50 story office tower or whether it's a residential house? How do you communicate with your customers? How do you, how do you dress? There's so many different things to learn, but this is one of them. What do you have to learn to become a master plumber? First of all, you got to learn to start studying in the beginning. And man, if you'll do that, if you'll start studying right in the very beginning and keep doing it, you, you'll, it'll, it'll really impress you because I know so many people that literally wait till they're going to take their journeyman exam, study, then they'll never pick up the book again until they get ready for their master's exam. Matthew, what I'll tell you is, study from the beginning. Uh, now, there's a lot of different things you can study. Uh, that's a lot of what we go into a little more in depth on our course, but there's so many opportunities out there. Never stop studying, and, and that will help you get there so much faster. There you go. Anybody got any great pictures or videos or anything like that? There is a link to our subreddit, uh, Roger Wakefield posts. And the cool thing about that is that's where we get stuff for our YouTube videos for TikTok. Man, we get so much good stuff over there. Normally we've got Sean Strong in here. Uh, he helps moderate that over there. A great guy. If you don't know him, you can go over to Instagram. He's boom, the plumber. And a wonderful guy. Nate Emerson says, where is the Kajabi link? Uh, it was up in there somewhere earlier. Uh, I bet that Liz or Amber or somebody will put that in there, Nate. Uh, if not, put your message in again, and I'll make sure that I get back to it. Joey Z says, that's awesome. I've worked side by side with Local One. Love them. And it really is cool. And, and next time you're around them, Joey, ask them if they know an instructor. Like I said, his name is John Cullen. Met him the first time I was at the instructor training program with pipe fitters and welders and everybody else in Ann Arbor. Uh, I used to be an instructor in Local 100. And, and I got to tell you, the, the camaraderie up there with other instructors from all across the United States is really cool. Uh, actually, it's really cool. And I loved it. But man, when, when you meet them, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. You get to hang out and have a great time. It says, what trade is the most demand in Texas? Man, I, I'm going to tell you plumbing just, just because that's the one that I see all the time that there's plumbing companies that, that cannot get enough people. But in doing my research for the getting into the trades program, what I'll tell you is that, well, how did I do that? Uh, what, what, what I'll tell you is that for every 10 people retiring, and, and we're talking about trades, so the average medium age, median age is 50 to 55 years old. For every 10 people that retire, only six are getting in. So every year we're dropping, we're getting less and less tradesmen and it makes it tough because me as a plumber, I can't get enough tradesmen, journeymen or master plumbers in here to do the work we've got. And it's bad because it costs us money and that's just not a lot of fun. <clears throat> so I'm going to say plumbing, but to be honest, it could be electrical. It could be HVAC. I know electricians have more work because they do so many different things, you know, pulling wire, uh, communications, a lot of different things that get away from just normal electrical work. <clears throat> Absolutely. You got to become a journeyman first. Here in Texas, you got to register as an apprentice first, to even become a tradesman or a journeyman. <clears throat> Demon face. I like this. Says, I'm not in the trades, but I appreciate people like you showing the right way things are done. It's really funny, and I appreciate you putting that in there because just the other day I got interviewed by a lady that's helping people get into careers that don't take four years. And when she interviewed me, she says, Roger, here's what's really neat about you. You are showing people a clear path 
to get into the trades. And the more we talk, she says, and it's not just a clear path. You're showing them how to excel, how to become the best tradesman. I don't want to just help somebody get into the trades. Anybody can get in and, and mess it up and say, oh, my God, I hate that, yada, yada, yada. Did you get into the right trade? Did you get into the right position in that trade? What is it that you did that you could have studied a little bit, done a little bit better, and maybe really loved your career? Because I got to tell you, I love being a plumber. I love doing what I do. But the cool thing about it is there's so many options and opportunities along the way that my career path has changed, but also even just being in the trades, what I do in the trades have changed. And I got to tell you, it, it's neat. So, man, I do appreciate it. I love showing people the right way to do things. Sometimes I'm still learning them myself. There you go. So that is the one. Okay, so, Nate, we've got two. This is the one to ask questions. You can go up there and put that in. And then, Liz, if you will put the one in for testimonials, too, uh, I'll pin that up or, or not pin it up, or, but I'll I'll click on it and stick it in the on the screen there. Rattlehead49 says he's right about that. Not sure which part, but I appreciate it. And they no, the Google form is the wrong one. Somehow we got to talk to Nightbot and have him quit putting that up there. VT Oasis VR says, how are you doing? And we're doing fine. I said SWT. Sorry about that. Uh, and we're doing great. It's, it's a it's a Monday here. Uh, I guess it's Monday everywhere. Uh, you know, I get excited about Mondays because we come in and we start working on new things, things that we're trying to finish up from last week, some that we're putting together. And I got to tell you, I've been up here all weekend working on this course, and I'll probably be up here next weekend working on it. But man, anytime that you're working on something that is going to help people change their lives, it, it's exciting. So I, I do. I love that. COVID says hourly rate can be risky sometimes because let's say it takes an individual one hour to install a faucet and remove the old one. And your hourly rate is $50, $45. You only made $45. And, and you didn't make $45. COVID, if, if my hourly rate that I charge a customer is $45 and it took him an hour, well, I've got to pay him $30, $35, bucks, depending on what he makes. So, no, your hourly rate needs to be a lot more than that. Looks like I saw Mr. Sean Strong dinner in the house somewhere. And, and I got, I'm behind on my chats again. Uh, Bobby Collins, welder instructor and a third year generation 638 er man. I love that, Joey. And my son is a second generation in the local 100. Uh, he's actually a estimator over at one of the largest mechanical contractors, a great guy. I'm telling you, Steve, this will get you in trouble. Maybe not in trouble. You're going to get everybody's attention because I got to tell you what, when a, when a lady's over there holding the bag says, hey, I need a test over here. And you see people looking around and they're looking at me like, oh, you're, you're in trouble. Uh, it's not what it looks like. Trust me. I'm not that stupid. If I was doing that, I'd taken Julie and made her be the mule. It's a whole nother story though. Uh, yeah, you're right, brother. And I like this. See, not by got this one right. If you're enjoying the stream, don't forget to like it and share it with a friend. Number one, just drop down there and give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing. If you like what we're talking about, if you get value out of this, like it. And if you know anybody that might be interested in getting in the trades and you think this could help them, man, share it out. Let them know because I got to tell you, uh, there's a lot of people that need to hear this stuff. And, and here's my thing, and this is why I want you all to think about this. And I've been saying this in my YouTube videos for a while now. I think in the next five years, plumbers, electricians, and HVAC techs are going to be making about $100 an hour on a check. And I really do believe that. All right. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to go back and search filters and just see because I'm not getting many questions. I don't know if y'all uh, don't like me today or what. I mean, I hope that's not it. Mm. See if 
tagged it right. Let's apply that and look and see. Mm. Chris says, yeah, that's my favorite one. I like that. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Listen to this guy, people. I'm a third-year journeyman, and I have learned new things about every time I click a video. Extremely knowledgeable. You're the man, Roger. Chris, number one, thank you very much. Number two, if you'll click on the link to go over to, and I think that's it right there. Uh, no, that's not the one I was looking for. Anyway, if you'll click on the link to, to go over for testimonials, uh, Liz will put it in there again. Uh, man, really would appreciate it. And I promise if you're a third year journeyman, even this, this course that we're doing, there's things in there that are going to help you because it's going to help you think a different way. And I got to tell you, I, man, I'm excited about this. All right. So when do you know you should start your own plumbing business? Also, if you're an apprentice plumber without a training program. Okay. We talked about this one a while ago. Man, study, study, study. But you've, you've got to learn what to study. So, Matthew, man, good stuff there. There's the one for getting started. Uh, this is where you can get in, ask your question. I don't know if that's the one that I've got tagged. Maybe it is. Amber, I hope that this is the one you put the link in because I've literally only had one question asked today. I've got three in there, but two of them are from last week. Eddie says... If they won't pay a dispatch fee, they won't get a professional plumber's worth. Boy, isn't that the truth? And that's one we deal with all the time. Joy Z says, on an HVAC LLC. I like that because, see, I'm a plumber, but I also am a certified HVAC technician. And I got to tell you, I, I love the fact that I did it. I really, I wish I'd have done more with it and actually got out and learned more about it. Yes, indeed. Augustine Sandoval. How are you doing? Good to have you in here. And editor Grace, Grayson made it in the house right ahead of Mr. Sean Strong. Now, this is the one we were talking about earlier, guys. Man, oh, man. COVID. I started Texas Green Plumbing in, actually, I really kind of started getting everything together in 2014. I think we started the plumbing part of it in 2015. And, man, it's been fun. It has really been fun. There's a link to the question right there, and I believe that is right. Hello to Brother Sean. Good to see you in here. Now here's a good one. What is the best, best way to grow your company, and do you recommend buying new vans for the new guys, or you recommend buy used trucks? And i got to tell you, there's different ways to look at it. If you buy older vans... Make sure I'm looking at it. Yeah, if you buy an older van, if you buy a used truck, because I've got some used vans out here for sale, uh, you got to be ready for them to break down. You got to be ready for the downtime. And then how much does it cost to get them repaired? Because you've normally got to tow them, you've got to jump them, you've got to recharge batteries, you got to do so many different things. At least with a new vehicle, it's dependable. Uh, I used to know a plumbing company in Chicago, one of my mentors, a guy named Robert Melko. Robert would literally spend a hundred thousand dollars on a van, buying it, getting it stocked up, getting it set up, getting everything about it done. And I got to tell you, man, I kind of like that attitude. That's the way you go about it. Absolutely. Sean just got off the roof to run. So are you sweating because you got off the roof? Are you sweating because it's hot and you actually been working today? <clears throat> IWUA. And it's funny, I mean, I'm glad you put that in there, Joy, because we are literally the, the the program I'm working on that I keep talking about tonight. Literally talking about, and I'm, I'm giving everybody the links to all the different unions and all the trades. That way, somebody that wants to get in, it gives them an opportunity just to check and see. There you go. Two trucks on the road, one and, and a subcontractor for digging. I, man, I've got four trucks on the road, and we've got digging subs too. And i tell you what, man, I, I could still use another plumber. It's, uh, it's, it's, 
It's a good time to be in the trades right now, guys. How do I build a stable scaven economy? Which buildings do I have to build in my under cities? And here's what I'll tell you is look, guys, if y'all wanna if y'all want to start your own company or you want to grow a company, residential service is phenomenal. And it's just I say that because there's not as many people doing it, and there should be a whole lot more. It's not here in Dallas. Yeah, Steve, uh, Sean, I'm right there with him. I hope it wasn't a steep roof. Oh, boy, we could talk all night about this one. Baghdad Saida, how are we doing? It says, difference between having your business under union and without union. What are the ups and downs? Uh, if you if you want to eat, don't be union. Uh, it, you know, and, and guys, look. I believe in the union. I think that the union is great for people that want to do commercial. They want to do a lot of it. They want to do bigger buildings. But if you want to open your own business, you literally need to be non-union. And if you want to, to be a tradesman, if you want to be a foreman, a superintendent, if you just want to keep growing in, in a company and doing great things for them, I think the union's phenomenal. I think the opportunities in the union are really good. The benefits, insurance, pension, and there's so many different things. But eventually one day, I hope you say, hey, I may want to work for myself because I've made millions of dollars for other companies. Now I'm trying to get in and make it for myself. You know, yeah, I'm a turd warrior. It don't bother me at all. <laughs> okay, now I love this. Fifi, I hope you're joking. Uh, number one, no, at 16, it's not too late. It's, it's a great time to start learning plumbing. Uh, pretty cool. Cartes Media says, starting a commercial service position soon. Coming from the welding side, any advice? Yeah. Uh, number one, commercial service is great. If you're coming from the welding side, Look, if you're good at it, learn pipe welding if you are if you don't do that already because there's great benefits there and it can help you out. Any good places to work for in Austin? You know what? Man, I need to do research in Austin. Uh, number one, Julie and I would love to expand down to Austin and, and start doing things down there. Uh, the, the reason being, number one, we, we love it. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to be in Austin. Matter of fact, I'll be in Houston tomorrow. Get this right. Yeah, tomorrow I fly to Houston, fly back home Wednesday, drive to Austin on Thursday, and then be back home late Friday. So, yeah, I'm in and out of town a lot. I'm going to Austin for a big leak detection job. Looking forward to it. So, pretty cool. Steve, you're right, brother. Perfect age. I wish I'd have been smart enough at the age of 16 to start getting in and trying to learn it. Uh, yeah. And if you're talking, this is fun, the video, or if you're, this is fun, plumbing, or this is fun, TikTok, TikTok Pro. If you hadn't seen us, man, we're over on TikTok too. That's really TikTok, not TikTok too, just TikTok, uh, which is kind of funny. Where'd it go? 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 I know it's in here somewhere. Check that out. That's where you can find me on TikTok, just in case you were wondering. Now, see it. It messed me up. All right. Anybody who, who had a, there we go. I knew it was in here somewhere. Feedback. That's the one I was looking for. Anybody who wants to win, and not that anybody who puts it in is going to win, but anybody who wants a chance to win the training that we're putting together, I, I promise you it, it will help. It's pretty cool. So that is the link to it. And on the 14th, on June the 14th, you want to be here because that's when we're going to, that's when we're going to give it away. I like that. Uh, boy, look at that. I like that. Speaking of that, Roger, if anyone's in the New York area and interested in a local 638 service union, 
So, Joey, as a service union, do y'all do plumbing, electrical, HVAC? What, what all do you do? I know you said, I believe you're a pipe fitter. Is that right? Or HVAC? Yeah. See, moving too fast for me. Uh, yes, Liz, thank you very much. All right. It just jumped on me from up and down and all that, so I'm not sure where I'm at. I'm going to go straight down to the bottom and start over. Uh, if you have questions, guys, please jump over or jump up to the top. There's a link. And I am actually over in there right now. I like this. Joseph says, hey, Roger, live in San Antonio. When I became a journeyman, I would love to come to work for you. Oh, when I become a journeyman, would love to come work for you. Man, I love that. Uh, what I like about that, Joseph, is I've actually got, uh, I've got a guy that just came up. He's fixing to be a tradesman. Uh, met him down in Houston. He started watching my channel, started liking what we did. And he moved up here, actually started today. So we're actually... Happy to have Josh here and, and welcoming him to the team. And actually, Kiana came with him, and she's learning to work the front desk. So, man, it is really good around here. Fluffy to Fresh Fox, I like that. Uh, you know, the, the recovery is really pretty good. We are uh, we, we don't get many calls about breaks anymore, although, believe it or not, I talked to a lady today that we're out working on something that was – from back during the freeze break. So, you know, we're still recovering, but for the most part, I think that we're good. But the problem is, is of course, just like everybody else around the country, we're still fighting pricing. We are fighting materials. We're, we're still being told some water heater parts are like 20 weeks out. Uh, boy, there's a good one right there. Mark says, get rid of welfare and more people get into the trays. Yeah. You know, the, the bad thing is, look, the trades aren't that hard to work. And, and the really good thing about it is you can make an amazing living at it. And, and it just blows my mind. Uh, Editor Grayson got a link right there. I like that. And that is a good one. You know, and, and we are doing good. WT, I, I really do appreciate that. Uh And I, and I like this. How do you get around who you know than what you know? Because sometimes it is. It's not who you know. It's what you know. When it comes to business plumbing, because it's hard in Australia to get a trade because there's no men mentors. You know, man, I, I, Nathan, here's the deal. That's what, I'm, that, that's what I'm talking about right here. When I talk about the training we put together, this is a chance. And I mean, I want you all to think about this. If you worked open shop, which Sean, you have, and you work next to a bad plumber, guess what you're probably going to be? It's hard to work next to people that don't do things right, don't do things good, and expect to be better than them. Now, you may be better later, but that if that's who you're learning from, that, that's what your skill set's going to be. So that's part of why we're putting together what we did. We literally want to teach people how to avoid that, how to learn to be better. How do you put yourself in a position to where you're the one getting promoted to the better jobs? How do you put yourself in a position where you're the one making more money? And, and, and I say this because, you know, I got into the union after I'd been plumbing for 17 years. But just four or five years after being in the union, I was making double scale. But it's because I learned more than anybody else. I worked harder. I worked different. I worked smarter, not necessarily harder. And I learned the things to put me in a position to where I was getting the good job offer. I was getting the position offered to me. And I, I was getting put in a position to learn more things. So that's how you do it. You still got to find that mentor. You still have to find somebody that can educate you and that you can learn from. It may be in the union. It, it, it may be through PHCC. It, it may be open shop. There's so many different opportunities out there, but like I said earlier, 
even if you are getting into the union, uh, and I don't care if it's the, the, the pling union, the electrical union, the, the HVAC union, sheet metal union, it doesn't matter. They're teaching you how to put pipe, duct, wire, whatever it is. They're teaching you how to be an installer, how to be a repair person. I'm teaching you how to learn things that will set yourself apart from everybody else. Joey Z says, couldn't agree with you more. I love that one. Just repopped a bathroom in a 30-foot tunnel. I went to put hangers in the drain line. You hit a water line in the slab. Man. David, man, I feel for you, brother. It does happen, though. Maybe better plumbers, but not better looking. You know, Sean, I, I'm, I need to talk to you about your self-confidence. I think you need to work on that. I think you really need some more confidence. Con Hack says, hey, Roger, uh, didn't get in the union this year. Do you have any tips on what I should do? I uh, just want to start your apprenticeship. Number one, Con, if you didn't get in, here's what I would do. I would tell you, get out and find a job, open shop. Start learning the trade. Get a study guide. Start learning the trade. Contact the AHJ in your area, the authority having jurisdiction. Start figuring out what you need to learn. What code are y'all building by? Uh, no matter which trade it is. So it, it's there's so many different opportunities, but the first thing I would do is try to get out and get a job. Try to get a job doing plumbing. And then the next thing that I would think about is, where do you find a mentor? Where do you find that training? Because and you, you can't just go out and work next to a, a, a half-wit plumber and think you're going to be a whole lot better than that. It normally doesn't happen. People literally, it's called the lid. And if the lid is the person you're working with, that's about where you top out at. you got to find a way to get better. HVAC apprentices, I'm a kid working for Union Shop. I have to drive have to drive a year before I get in. I asked guys if I could help them on the jobs. They say I can't help them because that's because that is concerned stealing union jobs. You, you know, and here, here's what I'm gonna tell you is if you're a pre-apprentice and that's the way it's set up, that, that's what they want you doing. But here's what I would tell you too is is learn why you can, learn what you can. And it may just be asking questions when you're driving. When you deliver materials, when you deliver equipment, what's this for? How's this used? What can you ask? That's the way I look at it. But I will tell you this. The more you ask, the more you learn, the more it's going to help you. <clears throat> In the training program that we're putting together, we talk about getting into the right position and then continuously learning. Because to me, those are two things that can make such a big difference. Sean, Sean, Sean. I love that. Joey, thank you very much. <clears throat> mm. Brian said, RC channel. Man, I'm sorry to hear that about your mother. That's tough. Praying for you, man. That's tough. Yeah, 20, 20 weeks out, call me, I'll call Ferguson, send them to the pro. I love that. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, look, I, I got to tell you, I, and, and look, I've talked to Ferguson. You know, the neat thing is, and we got a video coming out Wednesday talking about Charlotte PVC pipe, PVC and ABS, actually went to Charlotte two weeks ago, uh, three weeks ago now, I guess, and did a video about how pipe and fittings made PVC, ABS. And I got to tell you, it was so freaking cool. And number one, they're the nicest people. And everybody there is so happy and so happy to be there. But I got to tell you, man, it was just, it was cool to watch it and see how it's done. I've always wondered how they made fittings. I've never really understood the injection mold process or anything like that. <clears throat> so I'm telling you. This Wednesday at 5 o'clock is a video y'all want to see. 
when I get near to getting out, I'm going to apply to your local open pop shop. I love that. And was wondering if there's any advice you can give me as a veteran. Already watched your veteran video and loved it. Thank you. Well, no, number one, uh, thought of investing. Thank you for your service. You know, here's what I'll tell you is as a veteran, number one, you're already at an advantage. And the reason I say that is <clears throat> you should already have a work ethic. You should already understand, look, I need to be on time. I need to dress right. I need to tuck my clothes in. I need to look good. I need to act professional. <clears throat> Y'all are welcome. Uh, you, you need to act professional, but you know things that a lot of people getting in the trade still have to learn. So I think that it's going to be good for you because you've already got that career mentality down. Hope it works out. Talking about Anthony Franco. Turtle says, I once lived in a trailer that leaked bad. Uh, then it turned out someone used duct tape to fix all the many leaks under the house. Man, that's tough. Uh, and I say that because I, 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 I travel around doing leak detection. Uh, Y'all heard me say that I'm supposed to be in Houston Tuesday, not for leak detection, but Austin Thursday and Friday for leak detection, then in Oklahoma City a week or two after that. Uh, it's been a lot of stuff going on. A lot stuff going on let me see here got more questions in here i love it as if y'all have questions please go to the link on top go over and answer or ask your question in there i'll make sure every one of those get answered as you see in the chat i end up jumping around quite a bit it says i'm a non-union kid working for a union shop and I've taken your advice to ask the union guys if I can help. Uh, so that I can't. Okay. Oh, let's see what I did. I clicked on the wrong one. <clears throat> My bad. Okay, Tony says. Oh, Roger. Uh, ro sorry about that. Roger, in your training course, is it going to help me be a better plumber? And, and the answer is no. The answer is yes. I know that's kind of weird, isn't it? It's going to help you become a better tradesman. And literally one of the first modules talks about what all different trades are there and how to find a job in them. So it may not help you become a better plumber, as in how to solder, how to lay out, how to set a toilet, how to do that. But what it is going to teach you is how to be a better employee, how to be a better tradesman, how to know your trade better than most others, how to, how to get the job offer that other people aren't getting. And it's going to be because you're going to put yourself in a position where you are working smarter. You're learning things better. You're doing things different. And, and that's what it's all about, investing in yourself. If you will invest in yourself, you'll make more money. The payback is phenomenal. I uh, already did that. Jump way down there. <clears throat> there it is again. Guys, if, if you've learned anything from me at all, please click on this link over there. Go over and... Give me a, give me some feedback. Give me a testimonial. You know, I learned this from Roger and this is why it helped. Hey, I make more money now because I want to learn whatever it is. Go over there and let me know. Uh, we're going to do a drawing out of the people that do that on June the 14th. And we're going to do a giveaway. I think it's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. And Joey, this is great. Every single day I go to work with an attitude of learning. That, that's what it's all about. 
Bobby Fret says thoughts of HVAC. I love it. I love it a lot. Buckeyes, did you know that U of M gets most of their players from Ohio? You know? That's why they don't like each other up there. That's right. How are you going to know how to do something if you don't? If you don't know how. Absolutely. All right. That was a bounty hunter. That's cute. All right, so when you get into the trades or when you got into the trades, and we do have a lot of trades people in here, my question to you is what made you get into the trade that you did? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you my story, and then I'm going to tell you all, if you've, if you've got any questions, please uh, go to the link up top, go over into the forum, ask the questions over there. But the cool thing about it, is when you got in the trade, why? And what I can tell you is there was no research done. There was nothing done. One of my best friends told me about his father and his three brothers that were all in plumbing and told me, hey, man, you know, this is why they're in it. They love what they do. They make good money. I mean, he had some great reasons. So not much longer after he told me that either – quit or got fired from where I was at. But that's what got me into plumbing. And, and with me, it was just luck of the draw because it turns out I loved plumbing. But what I want to tell you is there's a different mindset or there should be a different mindset. You should look at what the trades are about, what they do, what they do that you would enjoy, what they do that you would like, maybe even what they do that you would not like. What is it that any of the trades can do that you would say, wow, you know what? I would enjoy doing that every day for the rest of my life. And, and Sean Strong and I've had this conversation because it's like, if I wasn't a plumber, I, I literally don't know what I'd do. Probably make videos. But the thing is, as a plumber, I get to make videos about something that I really enjoy. And I was in there literally looking earlier. I've got, I've got so many videos I need to make right now. And we just had some trainers delivered this Saturday. And I'm so happy about it because now I have another opportunity for videos. And this is where I get to teach more. So the things that we're doing, I think I'm actually going to get to improve the trades. I'm going to get to improve people's lives and help put them in a better position. And I say all this because when I got into the trades, I had no idea what kind of trade I was getting into. I just knew I was getting into plumbing. I didn't know that there were different types of plumbing. I didn't know there was commercial and residential service, new construction, union or non-union. And that's sad because my dad was a, a union member with CWA, the Communication Workers of America. You would think he'd have at least told me somewhere along the way, hey, if you're going to be a plumber, you, you might want to Think about the union. You might want to try the union. Never said a word about it. So this is the kind of thing that we've put in this course to help people figure out what kind of trade do you want to get in, first of all? And how do you know that that's the right trade for you? Have you done any research? Have you figured anything out? We have an opportunity here right now. And I wrote an article on LinkedIn the other day. <clears throat> about why right now is the greatest time ever to graduate. And, and I really think that it is because I think people graduating right now have opportunities ahead of them that they've never had before. And the reason is because of where we're at. With what's going on with COVID, more people have decided to retire than normal. Less people are getting in because the unions have slowed down. PHCC slows down. Everybody slowed down on bringing people in because we didn't know what was happening. But the trades were still going strong. The trades were still busy because the trades are essential. So whether it's plumbing, electrical, HVAC, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> people have to have safe drinking water. They've got to have safety from their home, protection, conditioned air, power and lights, whatever you want to call it. 
all the trades are essential, or all these trades are. And while all this was going on, we may not have been able to go out to a restaurant, but we could still go to work and build buildings if we were in the trades. <clears throat> so that, to me, is why getting into the trades right now is a great time to do it. Like I said, doing research for this, there's 900,000 unfilled trade jobs in the United States. Get out and get one of them. Because here in the next few years, with less and less people getting in and more and more people retiring, those jobs are going to be easier to get because there are going to be so many open because we can't find good people to do them. And the good people that we can find are going to get paid premium rate for it. <clears throat> There's the link there, uh, tradesacademy.com. Get started. I love that. I hope that's the right one for the question. There we go. Got module one complete. I'll start shooting module two, I think, tomorrow. This is going to be good. Love that. Second thoughts. So, and I love your name, by the way. <clears throat> Saw one of the new transit vans in Richardson a few days ago. Looks great. Thank you. You know, we, we've done pretty good on our vans. Uh, you know, we had somebody ask earlier about buying or, or buying new or old. I got to tell you, September, October, we got four new vans and we leased them. But I got to tell you, makes all the difference in the world. They look good. They're roomier. The guys love them and they don't break down. So it's great. <clears throat> Buckeyes fan from Detroit. What the what? Uh, <clears throat> this has been the most exciting drive home from the city since I can remember. Joey, thank you. Yeah, you know, and guys, here's the deal. Look, if you really believe stuff like that, please go give us a testimonial. What What have you learned? What have you picked up that's helped you in your trade, in your career, in your profession? What's helped bring more value to you? What's helping you make more money? And, you know, what did we teach you to help you do it? And, man, talk about perfect timing. Professor Nez is in the house. Good to have you. And, man, I hope you're still here. I know I'm behind on my, my, my chats. That's not too bad. Uh, Professor Nez, you know, number one, great seeing you here, sir. Thank you for coming by. I hope everything is going well with you. If, if you want to learn how to build a brand, how to grow, how to get better, how to be a better you, and Professor Nez is a great guy to learn from. And that's another channel that you should definitely jump over, look at, and subscribe to. actually caught him in his live yesterday. It was wonderful. Uh, like this right here. So from the other streams where I found you, I subscribed. So this is in the feed now. I love it. The Emmy feed now. I love it. Hit the like button, y'all. See? Thank you so much, brother. All right, Cyprian Gange says, what do you think about automation and plumbing? Do you think 3D printing houses is a threat in new construction? Everything's going to be a threat, but to me, they're still going to have to have people that can actually go in, fix things, install things properly. Somebody did a, a basically it's a styrofoam house here. I saw it a couple of years ago, went and looked at doing some things on it. And it just, it didn't impress me much. But what I want to tell you is that the neat thing about it is, and it slid together like a puzzle, but the plumber still got to come and put the pipe underground. Don't care how good you are at 3D, it ain't going to work. Uh, the plumber still had to come and put the pipe underground, still had to tie it into the lines in the wall. Now, they put voids in there. They did a lot of different things. But, man, at the end of the day, they still had to have a plumber. And... That's kind of what they called me about. It's like, look, can you come set this up? Can you come do the rough end? Can you do this? Can you do this? They're trying to make it easier, but some of it they're making harder. But I got to tell you, I like the styrofoam walls. I like the way it slip locked together with the metal studs. It was actually pretty cool. Joey Z, you are right, man. And I don't know if you're talking about you or me, but I tell you what, I am very passionate about what I do. I think that we have an opportunity, and, and, and this is why I take it personal. 
I want to tell everybody I can about the trades and how good it's been for me. Because look, I was one of these kids. I, I was, I would have been voted most likely to go to prison had that been an option. Uh, I just I always stayed in trouble. I loved to fight. I, I was, I was not the greatest kid on earth, but I knew that I wanted to do good things one day. I just, I wasn't worried about it right then. I was a, a good C student. I knew I had to make a 70 to pass. So I did. Uh, matter of fact, I shot for it, aimed for it, uh, which is bad. But until I got in the trades and started learning that and got really excited about it. But, but I mean, even then as a tradesman, it's like, it's like, you know, I know what I need to learn, but it's going to be there. It ain't going nowhere. I don't have to be the smartest plumber on earth today. It's always going to be there. And whenever I started investing in me, when I started investing in my education, in my training, in my knowledge, whether it be through mentors, through coaches, through good plumbers working next to them, and say, hey, man, look, I want to come to work for you because I want to learn from you. There's so many different ways to learn from good people. And when you do it and you get in there and do it right, it, it makes a difference. It brings more value to you and, and it can, it can completely change your life. Steve says, offer you enough to do an estimate for bats hub replacement. Be listening on your drive. Good for you, sir. Thank you so much. How much do you install grinder pumps for? I don't know what to charge. You know, James, you, you'd have to look and see how bad is the installation? How long is it going to take you? I tie everything back to how long does it take? I know what my pricing guide says, but I want to look and say, hey, man, this is going to take me three or four hours, two hours, whatever it is. It shouldn't take that long on a grinder pump. But you may look at one and say, hey, this one is going to take that long. And if so, you need to make sure that you're recouping whatever you're investing. If you're investing three hours, are you charging for three hours? Because you need to be. On to the next inspection. That's what it's all about. Subscribe. Damiano, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, Vupik, th then here's the deal. Maybe you don't find a trade school. Uh, maybe you check out the unions. Maybe you find a different mentor, uh, a different way to learn. Maybe it's open shop. Have you figured out what kind of trade you want to be in yet? Because there's so many. I literally think two, four, six, eight. I think I've got a list of about 16 different trades together that I'm putting in and talking about in my course. And, and that's what Austin's working on. That's what it's all about. Giving people opportunities and options. So yeah, Sean, he is actually editing uh, module one of my course right now. And tomorrow I start shooting module two. Ryan Shaw, Shaw says, and this is a good one. Do you recommend finding an apprenticeship with a local tradesman or pay the money to attend a school? I don't know that I would pay the money. Uh, if that was my only option or if I thought that I was going to learn enough to give me an ROI on it, maybe. I love an education, but just attending a trade school, that is something you can go to work for somebody and do. Meaning, I came up open shop. I got a job with a guy at a plumbing company and I learned from the plumbers. Now, luckily in the beginning, I learned from some great plumbers and that is really such a big deal because there's some not so great plumbers out there and it's very easy to learn from them. I talked about this earlier, Ryan. If you want to be a commercial plumber and you want to work for a company for the rest of your life or, or however long it is, that's a good deal. Going and doing that, look, the union's good. Uh, talking about an apprenticeship, that they pay well, you'll get good benefits, meaning you'll get insurance, you'll get a retirement, you'll have a great plan there. But one day, if you want to work for yourself, you, you may want to think about that. Next one says, I have trade school 11 months long for 20 grand. No. Yeah. Ryan, here's what I'll tell you. <clears throat> and you're the, you're the perfect kind of guy that the, this training that we're putting together is for. Because if you can go to work for a plumber, I think you said plumber. 
A smaller guy. Okay. You don't say what trade. I, I'm, I'm going to talk about it like it's plumbing. Say that you went to work for a guy and he's a good plumber. He can teach you how to solder pipe, how to clean out sewer drains, how to, how to do a layout, how to do a rough end, what, what, whatever it is. That's what the kind of program I'm putting together is for because I want to teach you how to take those skills to the next level. I don't want to teach you how to cut pipe. I don't want to teach you how to solder. I want to teach you how to be the best freaking journeyman you could ever be because when you get into the trades, that's your goal, to become a journeyman. But if you'll do it as an apprentice with an abundant mindset, I'm here to learn. Life is good. Life is great. And that's what it's all about. And getting into the right trade, getting into the right positions, get you in a position where you're making more money. And to me, and if you're going to do it, why not make the? I, I, I used to tell people if, <laughs> if if I were doing anything, and I, I don't want to use the wrong verbiage here, but if I were doing anything, renting out my body and my mind, which is what we're all doing, I'd want to make the most money available. I'd want to be the very best. I'd want to be the high end. I want to be the one that people are like, hey, I want him. Because that's what it's about. If you are giving your time away for money, that's what you're doing. You're renting out your mind and body for a fee. So my thing is, why not make the most available? Why not make the most possible? And that's what I'm wanting to teach people. How do you put yourself in a position where you get the foreman and superintendent roles, where you get asked to move up to a project manager, where you get asked, would you like to run the big job? Because if you learn right and you do things right, those are the positions you want. And that's where you make your money. So mic drop. There you go, brother. I don't know why my night bot don't like you, man. It jumped on Professor Ness so quick. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Steve Wolf says, hey, good evening from the Netherlands. Wish we had some quality plumbing like you over here. You, you know, and look, there's got to be plumbers over there. Tell them about me. Say, hey, guys, do, do, do y'all know? Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong camera. Do y'all know what, what, what you can learn, what you can do? Or, you know, Steve Wolf, think about this. Maybe you can be that plumber. Maybe you can say, hey, look, I can learn this trade. There's not anybody good over here. I have an opportunity to set myself apart from everybody else because that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm trying to teach people. How do you put yourself in a position where you are the very best? Because those are the things that I learned. And, and I learned them from open shop, from the union. I learned them coming up through the trades the way I did. And I did put myself in a better position. But to me... That's what it was all about. Oh, looky here. We got some questions in there. Let me jump back over into the form real quick. And I already did that one. I'm going to check it. Just one, two, three, four. Maybe I did. Let me look at this in here just to see. All right. How do you get past who you know? Okay, so we did that one. Okay, we did that one in the chat while ago. And you know what? Whether you're in Australia or the United States, it don't matter. You got to get past all that because there are, man, man, there's opportunities out there for everybody. And sometimes, I guess sometimes it is, you know, that they do want to hire who they know. Nano says, hey, Roger, love the channel. I'm about to graduate high school, and I'm thinking about being an electrician, but I don't know whether to go straight into an apprenticeship or take the time to go to trade school. First, in your opinion, which way should I go? Number one, if, it, if it's truly an apprenticeship, meaning you're going through the union, you're going to get paid while you learn. To me, if you can do that, that's the way to go. You're going to learn something. Now, if it's not an apprenticeship and you're just going to go to work for a company, you want to make sure that you ask the right questions. Are you going to learn the things that you need to learn to be the best electrician? Are they in a position to teach you to be the best electrician? Do they have the best electricians? Or are you just learning from somebody that is so-so? 
Because I hate to tell you that there's a lot of so-so electricians, plumbers, HVAC techs, and all that out there, and it's not good. Because if that's who you learn from, you're going to be that so-so technician. And, man, it's just, it's not good. I don't know that I'd pay to go to trade school. You know, we had somebody ask about that a while ago, and it was like 20 grand. I Before I did that, I, w I would go to open shop. I would sign up for the training program that I'm doing to learn how to be the best and put those two together and say, look, I'm going to do well here and make yourself do well. Anybody go who goes through this eight-week program is going to learn how to be the very best they can be. And, and to me, that, that's what it's all about. And, and let me ask you all this. If, if you are in the trades, whether you're thinking about going to trade school or whatever it is you're thinking about doing, do you want to be the very best? Are you doing everything you can to try to be the very best? And if not, why not? Because to me, man, that's what it's all about. Uh, Habib says, I have finished a plumbing course now. How do I get a job in plumbing as an assistant? My question is, when you finish the course, do they teach you that? Because that's what, that, guys, that is the biggest part. It's not just learning how to solder pipe together. Okay, that's not what it's all about. That's part of it. And, and that's my only problem with vocational technical schools, with training centers, with, with, with the union. They teach you how to do the trade. They don't teach you how to be the very best. They don't teach you how to be a great person. That is something you've got to learn on your own. And that's why I'm doing what I do. And I hate to say it, but God, man, I wish that they would take time to teach people how to do it better. And I don't just mean the job. Oh, James says... <clears throat> My dad is currently out of work and isn't doing well, so he's you're running the company. Got a call to replace a grinder pump in an apartment complex. Pump itself is $1,600. Man. You know, different people mark up prices different, James, so I, I kind of leave that up to you. Know what you would mark any other material up that you may pay $1,600 for. That sounds like a really expensive grinder pump. Here's what I tell you though, you got to look at how long it's going to take you to install it, swap it out, do it, and, and figure out what that labor is going to cost you and what your profit needs to be. Just and, and it's different for everybody. And that's why it's so hard to give people prices like this. Because what I would charge here in Dallas, you got, you know, you got to look at me. I've got I've got overhead, I got new vans, I've got people, we pay insurance, we've got Vacations, we've got holidays. We, we've got so many different things that some other people don't have. And all that has to be looked at when you figure your pricing. So, James, I hope that helps you. I, I mean, I know I didn't give you a lot of information, but it, it's kind of tough to just say this and this. If you're in New York or California or Texas, all three prices are going to be different. Man, it's a popular question that Ryan says, do you recommend finding an apprenticeship with a local tradesman or pay the money to attend a school? Guys, I, I would do one of two things. Now, actually, I'd do one of three. Now, there's always community college, trade school, something like that, where, where you're going to pay something. I don't know that I'd pay 20 grand for an education in the trades because you can go to the apprentice training center, sign up down there. They're going to pay you while you go to school. You can go to work in an open shop. They're going to pay you while you learn the trade. And then you do something like what I'm talking about, this training, you know, getting into the trades. I'm going to teach you how to be the very best you can be to help you get the positions that you want, to help you get the leadership positions, positions to help you bring more value, to help you make more money. Because to me, man, like we talked about a while ago, that's what it's all about. You've got to put yourself in a position to make more money. Cat Daddy, what's up with you? Good to see you. Joy Z, absolutely. 
You know, the, the neat thing is, and, and, and this is what I love about what I do. And, and look, I'm not telling anybody that, that they, they, they can't go to a union or they can't do that and just do that and do well. That's what I did. I learned open shop. I became an instructor in a union. I, I joined the union. Uh, joined the union, then became an instructor. But what I'll tell you is, is that anybody can get, can do what I did. Anybody can go get a job open shop and become a great plumber and, and learn how to manage jobs and learn how to manage people and, and, and learn how to make money on jobs. You can learn to do all that. I did. The whole thing I'm trying to tell you here is if I would had somebody like me next to me along the way helping me, it would have completely changed my life because I'd have got to where I wanted to be a whole lot faster because I wouldn't have had to learn from half-wit plumbers. I wouldn't have had to learn from people that, that didn't know what they were teaching that were just trying to show me how to put pop together in a half-hearted way. That's what I'm trying to talk about. Uh, it says union first, union puts you through school. I didn't do it, but it works. Uh, and there, there's so many different ways to go. Jump right here. Eagle Fire 1971 says, I started as an auto mechanic apprentice in 90. Now I shop foreman at an independent repair shop. I did not buy all my, own, all my tools at once. Yeah, that's hard to do. Uh, matter of fact, that's very hard to do. Uh, I gathered them over the decades of work as I needed them. Good for you. I do like that. <clears throat> I, I like that right there. Joey Z, record a video telling your story and share it on Roger's subreddit. I love that, Sean. And that's a great idea. You know, and, and those of y'all that that make video, I mean, I mean, look, man, you can literally take your phone, set it up in a stand, sit and talk, it, and it works. Put put your video over my subreddit. We, we've got the link. Matter of fact, watch this. I think I can make it go right there. No, nope, that's TikTok. Man, I got Sean in here and I ain't put subreddit up yet. Surprise, he ain't talking bad about me. Maybe he is. I better read the comments closer. There we go. That's the subreddit right there. Check it out. Number one, if you've got any really good pictures of plumbing, electrical, HVAC, anything like that, good or bad, and put them in there. Uh, we have fun with those. Yeah, that, that's a great idea. I do. I like that so much, Sean. Thanks. <clears throat> Carl McHenry says, hey, Roger, got into plumbing a year and a half ago doing commercial plumbing. I just started today at the On Time Experts in Garland doing residential work. Love your videos and watch all of them. Carl, number one, thank you very much. Uh, I know a lot of people over at On Time Experts, some great people. Uh, and some of them I'd actually like to have over here. Uh, you know, number one, thank you so much for watching the videos. I like that. If you've ever learned anything, I will ask you to go in. We're, man, we're looking for testimonials today because we are putting a training out. Come back June 14th. That's when we're going to do a drawing and, and give it away uh, or give it away to some people. So you've got a good chance of winning it there. But what I'll tell you, Carl, is look, if you've learned anything, please go over there and give me a testimonial. Give me a referral, recommendation. I appreciate it. Love that name, Albano Raccoon. Big Man Raj, how's it going? It's going good. I, it is really, really going good. Capran says, do you think PEX will be more and more used instead of copper? Uh, you know, look, for some of us old school plumbers, you know, you know look, I still love copper. Uh, but I got to tell you, I, I like I like PEX, but I really like Upanor. The only thing I don't like about PEX is that people don't increase the size of the line to allow for the reduced size of the fittings and it creates flow controls, but yeah. And that's good right there. You're right. Uh, <laughs> I was addicted to Roger's videos for a week, man. Why just a week? Uh, I mean, come on. You could have given me a month or two or something. Sean Strong, what do you think here? It says, does extra investment on tankless water heater worth it over a tank type heater? And I'm going to give you my answer 
but I want to see what Sean says. And, and actually, Steve, if you're still in here, if you're back in here, if you don't have to do too much work on your gas line, if you don't have to change too much on your vent, your location, things like that, man, I think tankless water heaters are good. It's going to give you, and I'm going to call it unlimited hot water, but it's really not, but it's going to make sure you have plenty of hot water. Uh, I always try to get people to upsize their tankless to the biggest GPM they can afford or the biggest GPM that's recommended for the size of their house. Because the, the big thing is to get the water hotter, it's got to slow down the flow. And, and that's something we don't deal with with tank water heaters. So pretty tough. There's the link right there. Uh, if you have learned something, I ask that you please go in here, give me a referral recommendation, talk about it, and let me know. Kevin Abat Post says, starting as a plumber's helper next week, any advice? Yes. Never stop learning. Always try to be the very best and work harder than everybody else. Three great tips. Uh, Kevin, jump back in here on the 14th. If you've learned anything here, do the recommendation that I had tagged there a while ago. I don't see it now. Uh, I'm putting together a training right now to help people become the very best they can be. And to me, that's what it's all about. Critical thinking, problem solving, like a planning becomes your emergent. Boy, that's a repair plumber's life right there. I'm doing an apprenticeship, what do they expect you to know? Well, the th good thing is they're going to teach you. They are going to teach you. Problem is, you may be a bad person that teaches you. You may be stuck with whatever they can learn you. You like that? Uh, Joseph says, do you get your mustache done at the barbers or do you do it yourself? Uh, number one, Joseph, I used to be a cosmetologist. I know that a lot of y'all just started laughing, but that is the truth. Uh, I do my mustache myself. Uh, this is Monday. I actually cut my hair and trim my mustache today. And I'll do it again on Thursday. It takes a lot of work to look good. I'm just saying. ST3 Eagle, how are you doing? Good to see you. There's the link to the testimonial, guys. Thank you very much. Breeze Comics says, I start my own plumbing apprenticeship next week. Good for you. Now stick with it. Uh, yeah, stick with it. Such a big deal. The subreddit gang, man, that's what it's all about. And, and yeah, I'm like you, Steve. I believe in copper. I still use it. I still use it a lot. Uh, the cool thing about it is, is look, man, it, it works. We know it works. We've installed it and seen it last God, hundreds of years. We know it. Don't know about PEX yet. We're still learning it. You know, I don't think down here in Texas, we, we don't, we suppose the brand, but we don't use a lot of those. Yeah. Where's Bo? I don't even know. I, I guess I have seen them, just not down here. Uh, there we go. Right question. The Trades Academy gets started. Uh, if you got questions, jump over in there. Pittman says, found your videos last night on my day off and have absolutely fallen in love with them. You're making me wish I didn't do pest control now. Thank you, Roger. Pittman, here's what I want to tell you. And, and, and I love this because I get messages like this a lot. And it's never too late. It's never too late to get to. And, and look, nothing wrong with pest control. There's a lot of times we recommend it. Hey, we, we all get pest control out here before you want us to go into the house. Here's what I'll tell you, and, and I don't know what kind of money you can make or whatnot, but as plumbing, you have such a great opportunity to open your own business, to do so many different things. So anyway, Pittman, number one, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, I really hope that if plumbing is something you're really interested in, you, you at least think about it. Marquez Wilson says, people are talking about plastics imitating estrogen in the human body. Will PEX lines be a health issue for people in the future? 
You know, I really, and, and this is bad, Marquez, I, I want to tell you no, but but I also got to tell you that, that, look, we're we're finding out about lawsuits about PEX leaching chemicals into the water and things like that. PEX hadn't been around long enough that we know everything about it. We've still got a lot to learn. It's mostly electric in Hawaii, so they usually have to run another electric line for tankless. And Steve, even over here, if we put in an electric tankless, they've normally got to pull additional lines because, man, it takes a lot of juice to heat that water up like that. Kenny, thank you very much. I really, man, that's the kind of stuff that I, I really do appreciate because I, I love what I'm doing. I, I love the fact that I get to get on here and talk about plumbing, get to help people getting in the trades, get to help people get into the trades, help people become better tradesmen, start their own company or use social media to grow their business. Whatever it is they want to do, I get to talk about what I do all the time. So, man, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. And that's where we're at. Same thing, 220. But, I mean, man, we've installed some electric water heaters. Man, and I felt sorry for the lady. She had one installed. We called the electrician, had her... I mean, pull some more lines, get enough juice over for it. Well, then we do a flow test on it. And I said, man, you're, you got water cross somewhere. Actually, I, we did this when we went to install the water here. So you got water cross somewhere. She said, well, go upstairs. That They're remodeling the bathroom up there. Maybe that's where it is. So I go up there and look. I call her. I said, ma'am, look, number one, this water here ain't enough. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, you've got eight heads on your shower. And you bought a 4.75 GPM electric water heater. I said, you're not going to have enough hot water. And she's like, well, that's not what they told me. Well, I can tell you whatever they want to tell you. I'm just telling you, I know how to do the math. And she was not real happy about it. But Steve, she ended up having to run another set of electrical lines because we had to install a second tankless electric water heater. But I guarantee you she had enough hot water. I love this. You got this. Yes, you do. The Terminator. Uh, yes. Guys, uh, look, don't, don't think that you can't do other things. I got tired of plumbing at one point, and I thought, you know, I'm going to do something different. Now, I don't guess I really got tired of it. I started doing sprinkler work in Austin. Then whenever I came back home, my dad was helping my sister buy a hair salon. Now, I would came home, was working in a restaurant, which I'm a, I'm a good restaurant manager. But he called one day and says, hey, we, we'd like for you to help your sister manage a salon. I said, Dad, I don't, I don't know anything about doing hair. He says, so learn. Like, okay. I did. I went to school, learned to be a cosmetologist. Then I went to school, learned to be a massage therapist. So you can do whatever you want to do. Man, I love this right here. Sorry about that. Blackout, 35-year-old apprentice in Virginia. Any advice on the best steps? Absolutely. Number one, same advice I've been getting everybody else. Never stop learning and try to be the very best that you can be. That is huge. I wonder how all brass popping would be in domestic water, better, worse, or the same. It'd probably be better. It's, it's going to be thicker, but, man, that's going to be expensive very dakota says hey roger you have taught me a lot you make me want to get in the trays number one brother i love that uh there's a link in here somewhere about feedback if you will click on that and go over and give us a review give me a testimonial talk about what it is i taught you what you learned from me and how it's helped you i would really appreciate it because we are going to be doing a giveaway on June the 14th. So here it is. I'm going to tell you all a little bit about it. Y'all ready for this? And yes, I'm, I'm going to have to look down and see it to make sure I get it all right. So guys, I'm launching a program that will absolutely shortcut your path to getting into the trades and making more money as a tradesman. We're launching in a couple of weeks, and I want to give you a chance to win the program for free. So if you go to that link and share what you've learned from our trade talks, what you have used, what we are teaching you here, just any solid feedback that will help me so much 
and we'll enter you in to get the program for free. So that's what it's all about. So if you do see the link in there uh, and you can go over to the one that says feedback, man, I really would appreciate it. So Dakota, thank you so much. Pittman says, I would see about joining a plumbing trade, but you recently moved to Missouri, which has several of the unions here being reluctant to assist. I looked into trade schools, but they don't offer it either. <clears throat> and, and Pittman, look, here, this is part of what we're teaching in the program is how do you find the right job? How do you, how do you get in the trades? And it was so neat that, that man, I felt so good. This lady interviewing me Friday, literally we, we were talking in the interview and she just stopped. She says, oh my God. She says, Roger, you're giving people a direct path as to how to get in the trades. And I'm like, well, that's what we need. And she said, no, I know. I've just never seen it. I've never had anybody make it as simple as you do. And, and guys, look, if you want a great future, you're going to have to do things different. It's just, man, it's so good. <clears throat> Gavin Young says, regular watcher here. I have learned much from you, electrical, mechanical here. I rebuild water pumps. I like that in electrical motors for the St. Louis Metropolitan Sewer District. The skills are irreplaceable. Yes, they are. It's not what the guy at Home Depot said. Who are you going to believe? Yeah. <clears throat> hey, I've done all kinds of things, guys. God, the Home Depot. I'm, I, I love that. that. That is a good one. It's not what the guy at Home Depot said. Well, he knows, he knows so much. And it's funny because one of my apprentices used to work at Home Depot. And I'll tell you what, when he came over, he did know so much. He's like, man, I know about the fittings. And I know this, I know this. And it's like, okay, we'll see how it goes. Man, he was fantastic. Still is. <clears throat> And, and I will tell you this, Home Depot's got a good training program. Uh, I'm not saying anything bad about them. Uh, when he came over to me, man, he knew what was going on, how it was going on, what was happening. Uh, I really did like it. Well, we got 220, but that's not enough for those little tankless water heaters. <clears throat> Hey, Roger, I've become very interested in plumbing after watching your videos on YouTube. <clears throat> Seems like something I would enjoy. Uh, so like something I would enjoy as a living. What are the best first steps to take to go into that? Look, go, go to what? The Trades Academy, uh, the tradesacademy.com, getting into the trades. That That's what this is all about. That's what I've been talking about today. I'm trying to teach people the right way to get in, the right way to put themselves in a position to make the most money. So Cooper, <clears throat> that should do it. Well, I'm having a hard time breathing in here now. Not breathing, just you know, breathing. Uh, direction, man, that's what it's all about. How can you get the right direction? And that's, that's what was cool about that interview on Friday. And I know I keep talking about it, but I mean, literally, to have this lady say, look, you have put it in a way that it makes it really easy for people to get in the trades. And I'm like, you know, it should be easy. Uh, and I read an article by a lady up in Canada the other day, <clears throat> and she's a pipe fitter. And she was literally talking about how bad it was that in Canada, they never talked about the trades in school. And when she got out of school, she didn't know what to do. And... It was just really neat. There we go, right there. It was really neat to to hear her talk and say, I wish that they would have talked about the trades and how to get in the trades. That would have given me direction. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help people and give them direction. Like this one here, Cody Burton, Bertram says, hey, a teacher here, been watching for a few months. Do you go to local high schools and vocational schools? You know. I'll go anywhere they let me talk. Uh, Cody, I love helping people. And, and, and to me, that is such a big deal. I really, I, I do. It, man, I think that if I could, if I could travel around and, and talk to all the high schools, and, and I think there's God, 300 of them. I, no. 
there's more than that. I'm trying to think of how many are in Texas. I anyway, if, if I could do that, oh my gosh, I think that would be fantastic. Uh, Joe Wampler, yes. It's called thetradesacademy.com. Go check it out. It's, 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 it's my, it's what it's all about. Uh, Cooper Gibson, thank you, sir. Ah, oh, Roger, I love that. Hey, guys, if you've learned anything, please give me a little bit of feedback right there. Isaac, that's what I'm talking about. Since I'm 17, already had my apprentice license for a year. How quick do you think I can be a master plumber in Texas? It's not that I think I can tell you. If you've had your apprentice license for one year, you can get your journeyman in three more. Now, if you're going through a Department of Labor training program, you can get your master's in one more year. So that's a total of four years from now. If you're not in a DOL training program, then it's going to take you four years after your journeyman. So now you're looking at seven more years. Let's see, I got this down. Absolutely. You know, man, here, here's the deal. The, the, the opportunities now are fantastic. And <clears throat> I am probably going to have to get off here before long. Uh, I don't want to just keep coughing in y'all's ear <laughs> microphone. Uh, let me jump back over into the forum real quick. Okay, now I think you same guys are just asking the same questions over and over. Yeah, guys, if if y'all will. Yeah, asking a, a, a lot of, the, ooh, I don't know what I just did here. Make sure we get, okay, I pressed the wrong button. Uh, let's see if that'll do it. All right, so that is, is the link that will take you to it. it. As you'll see, full site's coming soon. It's not there yet, but it's coming. Uh, here's the thing. The feedback, that's going to be the big deal because you have an opportunity to win free training. And we'll be doing that here June the 14th. Connor Kenny says, started my plumbing apprenticeship three months ago here in Michigan, and I've been loving it. Uh, number one, I think that's really cool. I, I love it up in Michigan. Uh, I used to be an instructor in the union, so we'd go up to Ypsilanti to Washtenaw Community College. So I would go up there every year in August, and I got to tell you, man, Ann Arbor in August is amazing. Love it there. Love the food. And I, I can't think of the name of the strip, but there's an Italian restaurant and an oyster place right next to each other. Amazing. It says, I forgot, Roger, apprentice for Mr. Reuter, the residential. Also, would it be an issue to switch to commercial in the future? No. You know, the, the neat thing is, and, and that's how I got the experience that I got. So I, I want you all to think about that. It is literally... I started in commercial. I got a job on a big commercial remodel downtown Dallas. And that was my first job. The cool thing about it is I, I did that job for the last half of my junior year and then the summer. And I decided, look, I'm going back to school. I'm going to go back to high school. I was lucky because I was far enough ahead when I quit that I graduated with my class. So what I want to tell you is that you can move around because when I got back in plumbing, I got into residential service. So I've done, you know, that that's why I think I'm probably one of the best people to talk about this and teach this. I've done commercial. I've done residential. I've done new construction. I've done service. I've been union. I've been non-union. I've done just about everything you can do in the trades or in, in plumbing anyway. Uh, and I did start out 
as a as a, a laborer on a construction site cleaning up, and I loved it. Jordan says, "Hello, Roger. Do you have any opinions on hourly versus commission plumbers? If you believe both or viable, what would you say to someone who thinks commission sales plumbers are looking to upsell?" I think some of them are. I think some commission sales plumbers want to rip people off completely. But I think a really good plumber, and that's why we hire for character, we hire the right people. I think when you get the right person in, they just want to do what's right. It's not about the money. It's not about making the money. Yes, we know how much money we need to average, how much money uh, an average ticket should be. We, we know all these things because we do research and, and it's data driven. My big thing is, and Jordan, I want you to think about it this way. Uh, let me tell you a story first. There's a doctor walking down the hallway at a hospital and he's there doing his rounds at night and he looks up at a door and he sees the name of one of his patients. And he walks in and the guy's laying there in bed and he's got his arm in a cast. And the doctor walks in and says, says Fred, man, what's wrong? He says, oh, God, doc, I, I, I had a heart attack. He says, I had a heart attack and I died twice in the ambulance on the way up here. First time CPR brought me back. Second time they had to, had to shock me. But, but they brought me back. And the doctor says, or, or he says, he says, man, my blood pressure was so high that, that I just, I had a heart attack. He says, I know. He said, when you were in the office yesterday, getting that cast on there, we didn't think you'd survive. We thought you'd die before we finished. He said, well, why didn't you say anything about it? He says, well, you were just there to get your arm fixed. So I want you to think about it that way, Jordan. If you walk into my house and you're a plumber and you ask me, because it's part of your system, can I inspect your plumbing system while I'm here? Just check it out. I'll make you aware of anything that I find if you want me to. If not, I'll just document it, note it, and you can read about it later. And I tell you, no, that's fine. You're good. <clears throat> you don't have to do anything. Don't let me know. Don't, don't tell me. Don't do whatever. But if you come back and you say, hey, Roger, I just want to tell you, I saw that you've got a water heater it's 20 years old. It's in your attic. It's right above your living room. And your drain pan looks like it's probably clogged up. Wouldn't you want to know that? Because out of sight, out of mind, I may never go up in the attic and look at that water heater. So my thought to you, Jordan, is, or my question to you is, wouldn't you want people to know? There's people going to tell you I'm trying to upsell you or you're trying to upsell me. But to be honest, you're making me aware of a problem. And, and I have no problem with that. I think that as a professional plumber, that is something we should do. If we go to a house to fix a running toilet and we realize that there, there's a leak somewhere causing damage, wouldn't we want to tell people? It's not an upsell. It, it's giving them options and, and pointing out things that need to be repaired. So I don't see a problem with it that way. Let, let me know what y'all think. Joey Z, I, I'm assuming you left, brother. Good to have you in here. Thank you so much. Uh, there we go. Oh, man, it jumped. Oh, man, I was trying to go slow. Look at this. Brother Bear is in the house. Good to see you, sir. Man, I like that right there. Ryan Shaw, I'm 48-year-old, second-year apprentice. Get you some. That is fantastic. Sean, thank you for being here, brother. And it probably will. I'm going to shut down here in about five minutes. Uh, I got a phlegm or something in my throat, and I'm kind of <clears throat> tired of it. And I guess I'm going backwards because now I'm getting funny comments. Uh, is it worth getting my tradesman license or just wait for the journeyman? Uh, Isaac, what I'll tell you is if you're in a position where you can bring more value to your company by having your tradesman, meaning I'm a residential service company. If I have a tradesman, I can treat him like a journeyman because they can work on houses. So I would say, yeah, it could be very beneficial for you. 
my guys get a $5 raise going from their apprentice registration to a tradesman. So, yes, sir. And that is so good. I like that. Brother Bear, good to see you, man. Uh, I, I wish I was driving to Houston tomorrow. I'm actually going to be flying. If I was driving down, I'd, I'd have you stop and meet me. There's a barbecue restaurant there by Centerville on 35 in that store or something. Love it. <clears throat> 34 year old. See, that, man, that is so good. Steve Dish G, how we doing? Good to see you in here. Man, makes us all feel better. I love that. Ryan says, only 26, feel so rushed and behind. I know it's not too late, but the other factors taken into account, taking a pay cut really makes me apprehensive. And, and you know, that's one that we talk about. And look, Ryan, when I started plumbing, I, I was young. And when I got back into plumbing after I graduated, I, I, was, I was married and having a baby. I had to work two or three jobs to make the kind of money I needed. But I got to tell you, I love it. I, I love the fact that I learned different things. But I also love the fact that I was willing to do whatever it take, whatever it took. It's not easy to do. And taking a pay cut, you may say, look, it's not worth it. It may not be to you. But my thought to you or my, my question to you is, if this is a trade that you could learn that in the next four or five years, you could get up to 100000 a year, because I truthfully think plumbers will be making more than that. Would that be more than you're making now? What is it going to cost you not to get into it? Because that's how I look at it. Scrolling back up. Ronald Christ, thank you very much. I appreciate it, brother. Uh, Joey, come on, man. Absolutely. I like this too. Ryan, yes, indeed. Thank you so much. There you go. Steve says, I'm already working at someone's house. I offer a free plumbing inspection. Dean Rage, I bet you do. Joey Z, thank you. Vlad says, how to deal with new plumbing trainees when you have little patience? You know, having little patience is hard. What I'll tell you is that you, you've got to you, you've got to understand we were there one time too, and, and Vlad, this is a big problem people have with getting in the trades. They are literally like, you know, I don't know anything. I tell you what, before I started plumbing, I didn't know anything either, and it to me it's tough that, you know, patience is what it is. Uh, and, and and it's tough that it will literally keep some people from getting in the trades because they feel bad because people won't help them. Uh, man, it's just something you got to work on. And it really is. And it's something we all need to work on. I get frustrated with, with people too. It's just something we got to work on. Mateo says, do pipe fitters often work with plumbers and or do plumbers and or do plumbing work? I am currently in trade school for welding and thinking about becoming a pipe fitter. You know, Mateo, it, it's different work. Uh, pot fitters and welders, uh, how does it, got it Bear Car or David Car? I don't remember what he's got it in here. Uh, David Car. Uh, got your real name. You know, the, the thing is, pot fitters and welders are different. Pot fitters normally work with bigger pop where plumbers smalling. I will tell you this, though. If you think you ever want to get in a position where you may open your own company one day, it's going to be so much easier to do plumbing uh, because plumbers plumbers can just open. Literally, you can buy a truck and a van, start advertising, and open a business if you've got your license and insurance and stuff like that done right. Good way to look at it. But, yeah, you can be both. Uh I'm a plumber, but I can also be a pipe fitter, not a welder, because I, I never wanted to learn to welding. Bear can do it all. 
Brett Pittman. says i'm personally deaf as a result of an injury years ago despite this i want to get into a trade to be able to sustain myself would this be a serious issue and are there trades that are better for someone such as myself you know actually there there are brett and, and that's a great man great thing to think about a pipe fitter and a welder probably don't have to communicate to customers near as much those could be good a welder i mean think about it you're under a hood almost all day long uh that's a, that's a good way to good way to think about it. Uh, a plumber, a commercial plumber, you're still going to have to communicate with the superintendent. Look, I used to play football with a guy that was deaf. He read lips. And, and literally, when we were in the huddle, I would look straight at him and call the play, made sure that I he had a clear shot at my mouth to, for, to watch my lips because he read lips. And I'm telling you, the, the guy was phenomenal. I don't know how hard of hearing you are, or, or if you you said partially deaf. Man, to be honest, if you can talk to people and communicate with people, if you can hear enough that you know talking one on one, you're okay. Uh, I don't think you'll have any problem with it. Good questions tonight, man. All right, I got another one right here. Jordan says, hey, Roger, I'm one of the top earning plumbers at my residential service company, finding more and more often that my work is asking us to work more hours every day or coming on our days off. The problem is they don't offer any incentive to do this as we earn a flat commission no matter how many hours in a day we put in. There are other incentives like sales goals, but you have any thoughts on this? Yeah. I think you've got to find a good work-life balance. And <clears throat> I don't know what part of the world you're in, but what I'll tell you is what I would go back to him and say, look, I don't mind coming in more days, but, and, and you, you talked about it, sales goals. I would say, look, once I get over this much a week or this much or this much, that way it's going to at least be worth it to you. Meaning your percentage goes up, your numbers go up, or there's just a straight, Hey, if, if I hit, you know, 20 grand a week, I get an extra $1,000, uh, whatever it is. And if they say nothing, they say, look, man, I'm just interested in working 40 hours a week or whatever it is to make what you need. Don't let them control it. You control it. All right. Jordan, thank you very much. I appreciate that. That's one that I've heard before, and I got to tell you, I really love that. Mr. Kenneth Berger in the house. Good to see you. Uh you know, James Rogers, I'll, I'll tell you, and I'm not always a great boss. Uh, I've had people that work for me that do not like working for me. I want things done right. I want things done a certain way. I believe in always providing 100% the best customer service possible. And there's a lot of plumbers that aren't like that. Uh... Lachlan says, hey, Roger, currently working on a house where I have to make 13 down pipes. It's only 300 square meters. Any of your new builds set out like this? You know, I don't think so. I don't know what you mean by a down pipe. We, we do all under slab and, and pop everything up through it and then go all the way through the roof with some of the vents. So kind of crazy. You worried about vaccine shedding when it comes to unclogging sewers? Man, I'll tell you what, we uh we try to do everything that we do or everything we can to take care of our people. So look, what we man, we're pretty good there. There you go, David McCord says took a pay cut to join the trades and overtime has evened the field. And we try not to work overtime. We do every now and then. And to be honest, if we do have to work overtime, I'd rather give it to apprentices than, than journeymen. So like if we need the shop taken care of, if we need stuff like that done, that's who I try to get to do it. That way they can come in and make a little bit of money. Man, this is the question of the day. Arnold Sneak Spear, Sneak Spar says, will you ever finish learning your trade or in general? 
And my, my question is no, and none of us should. If you spend 30 minutes to an hour a day, every day, learning your trade, new tools, new materials, new techniques, new something like that, you will put yourself in the top 5 or 10% in your trade, and that's what it takes. Welcome back, brother. Good to see you here. Uh, Alexander, thank you so much. I love this. Mateo, getting interested in plumbing is what this thing is all about. Guys, I'm going to jump down to the bottom. We are fixing to get out of here. Uh, this is Roger, I need a new septic system. Uh, do I stick with concrete or go to plastic? Man, that's a tough one. I don't know. I haven't. I, I've heard of the new plastic tanks. I've never messed with them. And Sean Strong says he's all about that OT. Love it. Uh, I, I would probably go concrete just because, I, I mean, they've been around forever. That's kind of a tough one right there. That's kind of a tough one. Anyway, guys, look, I appreciate y'all being here today. Every, each and every one of y'all really do. Uh, there's the link to my subreddit. If y'all hadn't gone over there, go over and check it out. Mr. Sean Strong is the man taking control over there, and I really do appreciate everything he does. Again, if you have not <clears throat> gone to the the feedback area, the Trade Talks feedback, uh, or the Trades Academy slash feedback, guys, go over there and, and do me a favor. Give me a review. Let me know what have you learned from me. Have I brought any value to you? Has I Have I taught you anything? Either about getting into the trades to be better at the trades, start your own company, use social media, whatever it is, because I do talk about a lot of different things on here. But my thing is, if you will go over there and just give me some feedback, let me know what you've learned from me. Was it good? Was it bad? What have I taught you? Have I helped you learn something that is helping you make more money or do things like that? I sure do hope so. Is 200 too much to replace a bathtub? Obviously, that's not me, but that's what a handyman offered this customer. Wow. Wow. Uh, and, and Donovan, I, I don't know how you went over there. I put the link in there a while ago. Uh, yeah, there it is. Just go to the subreddit and search Roger Wakefield posts and join. It, it should let you in. That, that's not really a link. So I don't know if you copied and pasted that or what. Uh, and see that that's the kind of stuff I want. Optimus Prime says, yes, changed out my own water heater. Thanks to you. Thank you very much. Anyway, guys. I really do appreciate you all being here. Uh, I love what we do. Love the fact that we get to do this just about every Monday. I'm not sure if we're going to do it next Monday or not, because next Monday is Memorial Day. And then the next Monday, I'm actually speaking in Montana. I'm going to be at an event, uh, 365 Driven. They have asked me to go up there and speak. And man, Tony is the bomb. So glad to do it for him. So number one, thank you all for being here. I really do appreciate it. Uh, we do this every Monday. Come back in on June the 14th because we are going to be, that's the night we're going to be releasing our training. And I'm telling you, if you are interested in getting in the trades or you know anybody who is, you need to tell them to be here. Anyway, hope to see y'all soon. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.